Here we have a question involving surfaces. Okay, now we can rearrange those two equations up there to make z the subject. So you've got like a, you know, z equals a function of two variables. And we're asked to do a couple of things. We're asked to consider the curve of intersection of the two surfaces associated with this uh, problem. And then we're asked to determine the curve's projection in the xy plane and to determine the, uh, describe the projection in terms of polar coordinates. And now it's not an easy question because to visualize these surfaces is not easy. Okay? So you've basically got two surfaces, they, they're intersecting or cutting each other to form a curve in three dimensional space. And what you want to do with that curve is see where the shadow of that curve is in the xy plane. So imagine, imagine you've got some sort of curve and say the sun's up here and it's casting a shadow down below that curve. They're the points that you're interested in. The points that lie directly below or above that curve in the xy plane. So we're going to go through this and um, see how to do it. Now I've cheated a little bit because I've um, used Maple to help me. But I will, t I will show, you, like, show you how to come up with these things. Okay, So here is um, a graph use the, using the plot 3D command in Maple. Now I've only um, plotted that for a small section. You can see the curve, it kind of, it, it kind of or the surface kind of curves two ways. It curves sort of down here and then down like that. Okay, so it's a bit like a three-dimensional point of inflection happening uh, on that curve. Okay, it's called a saddle point. Okay, so that's that, that one. For this one, it's a little bit easier. It's like a uh, parabola. Okay, a parabola. So a surface that is like a one-dimensional parabola, but it's two dimensions. All right, if you put them together, You get this. Here's one I created earlier. OK? So look in here. If you look in here carefully, you'll see the curve of intersection between the two curves, uh, between the two surfaces. OK? What you want is to identify the points that lie directly, in this case, below the curve in the xy plane. All right? That's what we mean when we say projection. The projection of something. I think of it as a shadow. You know, you've got, say, a sun that's, you know, in the, like right above it. It's casting a, a shadow. You've got a curve there. Where does the shadow lie in the xy plane? That's how I, that's how I think about it. Okay. But if you don't have maple, how do you actually do something like that? Well, if you look at the question again, you actually don't need to um, draw any pictures to solve this to, to initially solve this problem. All you want to do is put one equation into the other one, okay, and eliminate the z value, say, okay. But here, I mean, to me, this is nice, a nice, um, uh, a nice uh, geometric um, uh, way of doing it, okay. Now. When you try to sketch surfaces, one of the best techniques is to use an idea called level curves. Okay, so you make z equal to a constant, and you change change the values of that constant, and you see what sort of curves occur. Now, for this, how, how do you know that this curve or this surface, sorry, is going to look something like that? Well, you look at the level curves, right? You can rearrange this to make, say, uh, you can put the 2 down here, I'm not going to do that, but what you can do is actually factorise the x by completing the square, okay? And if you want to, you can bring the 2 down there, and then you've got something like one variable squared minus another variable squared, okay? So if I set z or 2z, say, equal to a constant, say c, 
what sort of curves am I going to get? So forget about, forget about the x plus 1. Just, just, just think of that as, say, x squared or something like that. What sort of curve will I get? Will it be a parabola? A hyperbola? What sort of curve? x squared minus y squared equals a constant. Yeah, if the, I guess um, it, will be a, it will be a hyperbola. Okay, so the, the level curves associated with this are hyperbola. And you can see that sort of from the surface, right? If you slice this, say horizontal to the xy plane, the curves of intersection are going to be hyperbolas, and it's going to continue that way. Okay, so for this one, let's call this uh, A, let's call this B, uh, level curves. Are hyperbolas. All right. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but th that's just how you know that the curve is going to have a sort of a surface is going to have a saddle point. All right. What about the other one? The other one's actually easier. If I rearrange this and do another factorization on um, the x, right? Uh, so I'm going to complete the square in x here. All right, what I can do is come up with this. Okay, now I've skipped a couple of steps here. Please don't be mad at me, YouTube. Okay, I've just completed the square in the x there. Okay, so that's x minus a quarter in the brackets. Okay, well, so what? What does that tell you? It tells you that... 3z, or if you move the 3 across z, equals something squared plus something else squared plus or minus a constant. What does that mean? Well, it means that the surface is going to be a, like a parabola because it's bounded below. That, that 3z cannot go below negative 1 because you've got something squared plus something else squared. Okay? So that is the... Uh, a way of saying, oh, okay, well, it's got to look a bit like a, a parabola or parab paraboloid. All right, so level, not levels, level curves of B are parabolas. Okay, that's a good exercise for you to do if you can actually work it out. Of course, the easiest way is to use Maple or some other graphing package. Alright, so let, let's get to it. And like I said before, you don't need to know that what the surfaces look like to actually compute the intersection. Okay, so to find the curve of intersection uh, eliminate say z in A and B. All right, so that's pretty easy. Um, we've got three times Z. So if I take the Z from here, I'll get this. Okay, so basically this is sort of going into there. Mm -hmm. And now if I rearrange that, I should be able to get some function or some uh, relationship involving x and y, which will give me some sort of curve. Okay? So if I expand the brackets and simplify, I'll get the following. So I get 3x squared minus 3y squared plus 6x equals 8x squared plus 2y squared minus 4x. All right, so what I want to do is simplify this somehow. So if I take all the variables to one side, hopefully I'll get the following. So let's take everything to the other side. I'll get this. Uh, that's going to be 5x, uh, 5y squared. And uh, I'm going to get something like minus 10x. OK, common factor of 5.
So that's what I'm down to now. All right, so what can we do with that? We're not quite sure what that looks like, but if I complete the square on x, then I'm going to get something squared plus something else squared equals a constant. Okay? So, all right, so I take half the coefficient of x, square it, add it to both sides, and uh, take it away. All right, so now we're in business. So this box expression should look familiar to it, uh, to you. What is it? It's circle with radius 1 and center 1, 0. OK? So we're happy about that. So what would be the projection of this in the xy plane? Well, it's the same. It's the same curve. It's just the, just the circle that lies in the xy plane. Okay. You can see from this, from the picture that I showed you before, are you hiding under there? Whoop, yes. You can see that this, this circle here, or this curve of intersection, doesn't lie in the xy plane. But it'll still be, it'll, you know, this, as long as we interpret this as lying in the xy plane, we've got what we wanted. Okay, the last part of this question is a little tricky. Describe the curve in terms of polar coordinates. Okay, so let's just refresh our memory on what polar coordinates are. Right, so this is also, uh, let me just uh, write something about the projection. Projection is the circle uh, calculated above, lying in xy plane. All right. Okay, so let's talk about um, polar coordinates now. Remember, in polar coordinates, we use an angle and a length to measure, uh, to, to, to describe things. So in polars, we know the relationship between the Cartesian coordinates, x and y, and the polar coordinates, r and theta. Remember, you know, you've got, say, uh, y and x, and you've got some point out here, let's say, and you've got theta and you've got r. Okay? Just using basic trig, you can connect x and y with r and theta by the following. So what we'd like to do is get this in terms of these uh, polar coordinates. Okay? So probably the easiest way to do it here is just replace x with r cos theta and y with r sine theta in that uh, boxed um, expression. Okay, so let's call that, you guessed it, star. Alright, so we're going to get r cos theta minus 1. Or right, let, let, let's move the 1 over here because I'm going to do some calculations. All squared plus r squared sine squared theta. And now hopefully we can simplify that in some way. When I expand the first bracket, I'm going to get a cos squared theta, or r squared cos squared theta. So that's going to hopefully simplify. So I'm going to get r squared cos squared theta minus 2 uh, cos theta plus 1 plus r squared sine squared theta. So we know we can simplify that and that, and the positive ones are going to cancel out. Now what we can do is say factor out an R and then we've actually got our equation. All 
um, this has to be zero. Okay. So there you go, we're really happy. Good question. Okay, so so we're at the uh, is it one zero here? Yeah? Yep. Okay. And we'll go out like this. Yeah? Yep. Okay. So if R if R is zero, that would mean that um, I guess R is identically equal to zero. So you won't get the curve. You know what I mean? If R's are, if R's identically equal to zero, right? Then you'll just stay at that spot, right? Whereas, but with this, you can come round; it'll come back to zero. Okay, so I'm I'm very comfortable with that and ignoring the r equals zero. Okay, so just just you know just think about it. If you say okay, if 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 that's zero or that's zero, let's talk about that being zero. Well, what's the curve associated with r equals zero? Just the point of the origin. You with me? 